Welcome to Ask Ralph and Lonnie. I'm Dr. Ralph Demetrius, and this is the time of year when we do our yearly forecast. Now, besides being naturopathic physicians and master herbalists, we are also medical astrologers and location astrologers. They're kind of specialties of ours. But as astrologers, you can't really resist wanting to do a forecast for the year. And we've done our Chinese New Year forecast for at least the past dozen years or so. And we enjoy doing it, and we find it surprisingly accurate. Now, this is the forecast for 2017. This is the year of the fire rooster, which sounds pretty lively, but it's the yin fire rooster. It's a whole other component of it. But it is going to be a very, very interesting year. And realize that we are location astrologers. So the situation in one part of the world is different from the other part of the world. Interesting, yes? Now, in Washington, D.C., for the Chinese New Year, what the chart is showing, and I'm going to have the charts on our website. You can go to spaceandtime.com. You can find all the charts there. You can also find monthly forecasts from our planetary calendar, where the authors of this have been for many years. Uh, you'll find the monthly forecasts that I've already done based upon the forecast in the calendar. Uh, they're expanded forecasts in which I talk about things that I couldn't get in the 260 words that I get on the calendar. But in the Chinese New Year in Washington, D.C., okay, and it's early this year, it's uh, January 27th, so it's what you'd call um, in the Farmer's Almanac an early spring. We have the sun and the moon in the seventh house. Well, this is the house of litigation. You have 29 degrees Leo rising in the east. 29 degrees Leo rising is the degree of the royal star Regulus. You have Jupiter in the third house at 23 degrees Libra. That's the position of the royal star or the great star Spica, which not only is a very, very bright star, but it's the central star of the largest constellation, Virgo, and is considered, generally speaking, the patron star, star of, um, Cal of the United States. Okay. Um, and at the Midheaven in Washington, D.C., we have Algol at 24 degrees Leo, 24-25, which is the eyes in the head of the Medusa, which is not considered a generally good position. So I think that Washington, D.C. is going to be tied up in serious litigation for at least the first half year. The first half of 2017 in Washington is going to just be litigation. With Jupiter in the third house, it's going to be great for the media. They're going to just love it. Um, the eighth house is packed full of things in Pisces. It's Mars, Venus, Chiron, Neptune, Pallas, and the South Node. So the bureaucracy, the hidden government that we have, all the millions of people who are employed by the federal government are going to really be exerting the power because, honestly, I think our legislatures are going to just be tied up in a fight and trying to find some, some sense of justice. And I think that it's going to be a very heavy pale over Washington with an algal overhead. Um, I think you're going to see a lot of iconoclastic uh, advocates coming up and, and taking the stage. That's the Uranus and Aries uh, trining the rising in, in the ninth house, from the ninth house. I think that's what you're going to see. So it's going to be a very, very tumultuous year. Uh, and we'll see how it plays out. Now. Realize that Washington, D.C., as much as it likes to think of itself as the center of the country, is, is, it's not. It's a big country. And while on the East Coast they tend to call California and Oregon and Washington, you know, the left coast, keep in mind that California by itself is, I think, the sixth largest economy on the planet. 
And we live in California, and we're doing this forecast from Napa, California, which is you know the heart of wine between Napa and Sonoma, which are the two top wine destinations in the world for very good reason. California has a very different chart at the Chinese New Year. And there, the sun is in the eighth house with the moon, because the Chinese New Year is the conjunction of the sun and the moon in Aquarius. It's the point after which seeds sprout. And actually, on the day of the Chinese New Year, that January 27th, normally you can balance an egg on end on your dining room table. I just put it on top of a blotter or something, so it's not just something completely hard surface. But you should have no, no problem balancing an egg on end on the Chinese New Year. I do it every year, and I take a photo of it, and I post it you know, to various different places. But the eighth house is the house of collective use of power. And Aquarius is the sign of the community. At the rising sign is Cancer. Now, in Washington, it's Leo, so it's all about the ego. It's all about, you know, big personalities. Out here, it's not. It's about the moon. Now, the moon is conjunct the sun in this case, but it's still Cancer. That's the sign of feeding people. It's the sign of the mother. It also has Vesta, the asteroid that relates to our ancestry and also relates to our sense of mission at the rising, at 25 degrees, within two degrees. So it's going to have a very strong sense of California's very long commitment to taking care of families and children and feeding people, which is you know, what we primarily do here besides making movies and you know, incredible digital stuff. And we feed people and when we're not surfing. And then it's interesting, too, that you have Venus and Chiron are trining that rising from the ninth house. And this has to do with um, advances in uh, plant biology, advances in biochemistry and, and, and biology. Uh, a lot of money being go going towards research out here uh, on the West Coast. And honestly, it should... I think we'll probably move from the sixth largest economy to the fifth. And if you really want to get a sense of, of how large the economy is, go to look up on the web for the GDPs of the states. And, it, and then look page, you know, see California at the top, and then page down to the size of the other states. And as you're getting down, you know, two-thirds down, you're going, oh my gosh, some of these states are tiny and their GDP compared to California. We're just such a large state. We're over 30 million people. And very, very productive people in a very, you know, prosperous, fertile place. What's interesting is that at this point, I think three people are leaving California for every one person who's coming in. And the reason for that is that the housing has gotten to be so expensive. So, probably because a lot of people want to live here with good reason. So, the sixth house is filled in California with uh, tons of stuff in Sagittarius. And it's interesting, too, I was talking about these stars. When you have a lot of planets lined up with major stars at a Chinese New Year chart, it is a kind of an earth-moving year because these stars operate on a whole other frequency level. Okay, and this year Saturn is at the galactic center. You know, the center, the 25 degrees Sagittarius, at the, where the, the huge black hole is that the galaxy rotates around. It's a very, very spiritual point. It's very powerful. And Saturn, which is responsibility for our spiritual consciousness, you know, is sending us a message. In California, it's sending the message from our need to be of service to others. In Washington, D.C., it's doing it from the fifth house. So it's going to be dramatic. It's going to be dramatic. It's going to be a lot of, you know, old lawyers shouting at each other. Honestly, my belief in 2017, maybe you want to go to a different television service that doesn't, where you can eliminate the, the stuff from Washington for a while because it's going to get noisy. But on the West Coast... It's going to be about recognizing how can we serve our neighbors? How can we make sure the people in our, in our state are being fed? 
are being cared for. It's going to be, you know. And it's, what's interesting is that we have Aries at the midheaven, which is about independence. And so it shows the whole West Coast saying, you know, if they're going to do this stuff and they're not going to pay attention, we're going to go our own way. And with Uranus up there and Ceres up there, Ceres is the shepherdess. She's the one who watches out over other people. And Uranus is conjuncted seven degrees away. Ceres is the largest of the asteroids. And Uranus is close by. So it's about revolutionary new ways in which we can have creative solutions to be responsible in our society. How cool is that? And, you know, California has done this many times. Uh, one of the reasons why California many times is a leader in uh, social innovation is that, one, we are very far away from Washington. So when we decide that something's important, we go ahead and legislate for it. Well, if the federal government doesn't like it, they have to come out to California and fight it in the California courts. A little-known fact is that California employs more jurists in other words, attorneys and judges and staff, than the federal government does. Because we have so many courts. The federal government only really needs to have one federal court in each state, so 50 states. But we have 30 million people who need courts, so we have a lot of, you know, litigators. So when they're going to fight it, you know, we're not a lightweight. This is a little, little bit like when Microsoft fought the federal government to a standstill because they could simply put more money into their case than the federal government could. And California is very much like that, besides the fact that they had to fight it out here in California, so they had to fly out to court here, which means you got to bring the whole staff, the judge, all their assistants had to fly out to California and fight the case. And then they're going to have to do it again and again and again. Well, the problem is, you know, you come to California, and you come to, from Washington, D.C., and in Washington there's lots of traffic and there's noise and there's lots of good restaurants, but, you know, you get snow and you get cold. And, and you come out to California and it's beautiful. And they have great food. And there's beaches. And there's wine. And there's good-looking people. You know, these cases can stretch on for an entire administration as they try to fight this stuff. And it's not like the Californians aren't fighting back. So, essentially, California does what it wants to do, and, you know, eventually the administration changes, and the next one may not care as much about it. That's why California has always been the innovator. We legislate for it. We legislate for the future. The sense of compassion you're going to sense in California this year is very powerful, and the reason is there's a big cluster of planets, um, Mars at the last degree of Pisces, 29 degrees, which you're going to have a very strong sense this coming year of anticipation. Because right after the Chinese New Year, Mars enters Aries, its ruling sign, and what's called the, 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 like the spring point. You know, the zero degrees Aries is the first day of spring, and Mars is going to enter that spot within hours after the Chinese New Year. And Venus is right there, and when you've got Venus and Mars together, you know, hmm. And Venus is in Pisces, though, which is her exaltation. Venus is very powerful this year. Um, Venus is one of, the, one of the most powerful planets in the chart this year in terms of what's called the dignities. Last year, Mars was most powerful. Mars was in Scorpio last year. And it was a very, very aggressive year. But this year, Venus, which in the sign of Pisces, the sign of compassion, is very powerful in the Chinese New Year chart. So compassion is going to be a big message this year for people. In California, it's in the ninth house, the house of generosity. And out all, all along the West Coast, you're going to see the strong sense of, you know, the wealthy saying to the rest of society, what can we do to make this a better world? How can we help? You know, I think it's going to be a great year for, um, for charities, for nonprofits, for organizations that depend upon the, the generosity of uh, the wealthy and the successful and the far-viewing people who look into the future and say, how are we going to create our future? I think that there's going to be, in terms of how people in California envision their future, there's going to be a very strong spiritual imperative 
and also a very strong imperative about healing on a holistic level. Um, and also on a legislative level. level. It's interesting what the lineup is. Um, Pallas Athena, which is an asteroid that relates to being an advocate, right? Neptune, which is a planet that has a lot to do with spirituality. In Pisces, a very, very strong sign for Neptune. Chiron, which is a, basically a, a small planetoid that um, relates very powerfully to holistic healing. Venus, of course, which in Pisces is all about compassion. And Mars, which is talking about taking action. And because it's at the last degree, it throws all of its energy into the next sign, which means active energy towards and with compassionate, a compassionate heart. Because, you know, when Venus is nearby and she's strongly placed, it makes everyone around her stronger, and that includes Mars. Now, in Washington, it's a very different situation. All that stuff in Pisces is in the eighth house, the house of shared power. That's why I was saying, I think the bureaucracies are going to really gain a lot of power. It may be that, you know, what they're projecting now is that the um, Senate is going to block so many appointments. But whoever got into office, they, you knew you were going to face that. Uh, it's, just, it's, just into, it's turned into a grudge match at this point between the two parties. And I think the bureaucracy, as a result, is going to gain a lot of power because now what's happening is the professionals start running this. I forget which, which department it was in this past year that um, the senior officer, you know, the secretary resigned and rather than try to appoint a new one, knowing that how difficult it would be getting it through the Senate for approval, uh, President Obama just, you know, elevated the second in command who was a professional in the field and could run things very, very well. And I think you're going to see that. I think a lot of our professional bureaucrats, people who have years and years of experience uh, with these systems and have to oftentimes put up with, you know, arrogant administrations thinking that, you know, they're going to push their own agenda, I think we're going to see them stepping up and, you know, making things work as best as they can. I think in terms of uh, how the country in Washington kind of views generosity, I think it's going to be like lightning bolts, to tell you the truth. It's Uranus and Aries, Ceres and Aries. I think that's lightning bolts. That's just, that's like, you know, disruption. Disruption. And I think that um, in terms, especially on the East Coast, there's going to be a very strong sense of fear. Now, of course, it doesn't take an astrologer to know that 2017 in the United States is going to be, you know, a little wacky. But let's look at the rest of the world, what's going on, you know, globally. And for that, we actually use a chart called uh, astral cartography, and it shows where uh, the planets are uh, angular around the globe. And it's really fascinating. Uh, it wasn't until the advent of computers that you could even do this uh, practically, it would take too, way too many hours. In fact, it was developed. Um, in, it was developed in California, in San Francisco. Over the United States, we have Uranus and Aries at the midheaven. Just off the coast, we have um, Mars, and you know the last degree of Pisces about to venture into um, into Aries. Um, What's funny is that over the west, over the east coast, over Washington at the Chinese New Year, um, you don't have a lot of planets. The closest thing you actually have is Neptune and um, Neptune and uh, Pallas Athena descending, which shows, like I said, a lot of advocacy, a lot of um, bureaucracy. Okay. Um, it's going to be a mushy year. You know, it's going to be a, a year of uncertainty there. But overall, in terms of the um, kind of the heartland, you have Ceres 
and you have Uranus. And so there's going to be um, a lot of people acting out, especially in the, in the, in the, the Midwest, a lot of people acting out um, and a kind of a sense of like overall disruption. You know, uh, when you can look overhead and see what the planets are on a particular planet, it tells you what's going to happen, like, out there in the big world. And I have to say that Uranus is not my favorite planet to have overhead for that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, among other things, you could find that we have, uh, in 2017, one of the ways it might manifest is a record number of, um, of uh, earthquakes in the Midwest. Of course, Oklahoma... I think now surpasses California for earthquakes thanks to fracking. Uranus and Ceres are running up through that area, and there's a sun vested descending line going up through there as well, I believe. And so it's, it's definitely a hot spot running up through Oklahoma. But it also could be a record number of uh, large number of tornadoes in the Midwest as well. Um, on the West Coast, you have a different dynamic going on. And actually, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit there. On the west coast, you have, once again, you have this Vesta line running right up along the coast. And it's that very strong sense of mission. And Vesta is, you know, remember the Vestal Virgins were the um, priestesses who guarded Rome's good luck. And it was about dedication to our ancestors. You know, dedication to those who came before and I realize when people come from the East Coast, they think oh, the California doesn't have a big history. But remember, it does. The Chinese came here in the 1400s, left people behind. You know, the, uh, the history of California is really quite remarkable. And it's one of a lot of bravery and a lot of dedication. Now, there's also a, there's also a Jupiter icy line over the United States. And, you know... One of the things that we do see happening is the United States becoming a little bit of what you call an oligarchy, like Russia is, where you have you know tremendously wealthy people and you know things like um, um, oil companies, energy companies, you know, really, um, you know, they have a tremendous amount of power. What's interesting is that it's Jupiter over the United States as an IC. So even though in the big social structure, it will be very disruptive. The media will go a little crazy. At the foundational level, it actually could be very good for some people. For people who are willing to work in partnership. This is Jupiter in Libra. What's, glo what's going on globally? Actually, we're in for a very interesting year globally. Um, India. And it may be that India and Pakistan, they may actually start solving some of their issues. You have Jupiter and Libra overhead in over um, Western India, so up against India and Pakistan. It may be that they start finding ways to uh, cooperate. Now, alternately, it could be that they find things to fight about, too, because it's Jupiter, and Jupiter makes things big, and Libra can sometimes get into fights. But if there is disruption, okay, if there is a discord, it has the potential to lead to greater cooperation. I remember a great man once told me, you know, he had a lot of experience in diplomacy, and he said, you know, when people are talking, they're not fighting. And Jupiter and Libra does stimulate talking, even if it's arguing, but they are talking. Also, with Jupiter over the midheaven in Libra, um, at India, uh, it runs right down through the part of India where there's a huge amount of commerce and a lot of technology. It's the place where a lot of uh, international companies have their partnerships and they have their development labs. I think they're going to see a big boom this year. I think it's going to be a major boom year for India in terms of their international cooperation. 
a lot of partnerships being formed. Um, China and Japan have Saturn in the, at the midheaven. Now, it's Saturn at the galactic center, but it runs down through uh, China, Japan, and Australia. There may be... There may be a lot of issues related to um, austerity. You know, Saturn compresses. If Jupiter expands, Saturn compresses. It's not that expansion is always a good thing. It's not that compression is always a bad thing. But with Saturn over there, you do tend to find that um, they tend to be more restrictive. They tend to be more inclined to uh, tamp down. Um, uh, it may be, you know, it may be that women's rights become a, a big issue in China and in Japan. Um, in Japan, once again, they're having a, a continuing problem with simple people not having children. You know, many young women just deciding they don't want to have children, they don't want to marry, because it, it's a very difficult situation. You know, it's such an urban country that people live in small apartments. Well, if you have children, how do you... How do you deal with another child, another person in your apartment when your apartment is already so small and you're up on the 34th floor? The coast of Canada, from Vancouver north, they may see a lot of earthquake activity this year. I know there's been, just recently there was a six off the coast here, six something off the coast, a whole cluster of planets that are overhead at the Chinese New Year uh, all, all over the Pacific. Um, there may be a lot of focus this year in terms of the health of the Pacific, um, people advocating for the health of the ocean, you know, that's a big issue with the, you know, the huge island of plastic floating out there, of trash flat plastic. I think there's going to be, a, I think there's also going to be some really uh, interesting innovations this year in terms of technology, in terms of how to address this issue. It's Neptune, Neptune and Pallas Adena. In Pisces, the sign of the ocean, conjunct the south node, which, you know, adds kind of, you know, our responsibility to it, are clustered together in, in the Pacific. It was my plan to get everything within the half-hour episode, but 2017 is going to be an eventful year, so there's just a lot more to say. So if you'd like to see more of the forecast, go to spaceandtime.com forward slash 2017.html and you'll find out more about what's going to happen nationally and globally through our Chinese New Year forecast.